Yo, what's up, Serpa Squad? Tanner here. In this one, I'll make another patio pond of sorts. Sure, I've made them before, but the previous iterations were complicated to say the least. Successful, but complicated. I wanted to keep it simple for this one with a low-tech approach. The vessel or basin for the pond will be this incredible planter I found the other day. I ran a few calculations and estimate that it has a volume of roughly 25 gallons. I also have two 8 inch terracotta pots. Stacking them up will make it easy to create a planting area. To best utilize the space for optimal performance, I'll drill a few holes with a diamond tipped hole saw. I sprayed down the pot and drill. This will cut back on debris and keep the pieces from overheating. I used my hand as a guide to get the hole started. After an indentation is made, it's just rinse and repeat until it goes through. Clean them off to remove debris. Here's a closer look. I put several holes in this one, so the plant's roots aren't isolated to the pot. I made them in the other one to maximize the space within the water column. Fish can swim through the holes and use it as an area of refuge. For it all to work properly, I'll cover the holes in the top pot with knitting mesh. I cut it out into squares. I went on to apply silicone around the openings and attach the mesh. I let the piece sit overnight while it cured. Here they are now, looking clean and ready for plants. It's best to have bare root plants for something like this, so I'll prep them accordingly. I remove them from the planters and gently pull away any substrate I can. I often cut the roots as well to stimulate new growth. Then I spray them off to maximize substrate removal. If a little remains, it's alright. You just want the majority of it gone. I'll plant these using a mix of planted tank substrates. I put a base layer into the pot. Then I got to planting. I started with the phylodendron bipinidophytum, which is the largest one. I put some substrate around the roots to keep it situated. Next up is the Syngonium potophylla maria. I chose this one for the pop of color. With a setup like this, I typically include Hemigraphus raponda. It grows incredibly well in a riparian setting and adds a lot of great texture. I also had to add an Onanth javonica flamingo. To finish it off, I have a few rhizomes of Acorus cominius oborizuki.
The nice thing about how I planted this is that the entire planter can be removed for ease of maintenance. I took it out so I could add substrate to the bottom. I began with the base of the planted mix in case I decide to add aquatic plants. I'll cap it off with pea pebbles which I thoroughly rinsed to remove debris. I put in a decent layer since a lot of the beneficial bacteria will reside here. I put the plants back in place and filled it up. I think it's a disservice to make something like this without adding floating plants. They look cool and will eventually hide the terracotta pot. First were a few handfuls of Salvinia minima. I also added some Phylanthus fluitons. Finally were a few stems of Hygrophila deformis. A quick look at the pond before we add fish. In my opinion, the low-tech route is only possible with plants. Sure, bacteria plays a role, but as far as nutrient export is concerned, plants are king. On that, terrestrial plant growth will always be more effective than aquatic plants. So, if you can get riparian plant growth, like this, you'll likely never have to do water changes once the system is established. The plant roots will also create territorial barriers for livestock as they fill in the water column. You'll notice that the water line is above the top of the terracotta pot. This is ideal because the fish can swim in the shallows. Additionally, this will allow the floaters to grow over and hide the edge of the pot. I suppose you're probably also wondering about the light. What I have is a pendant light fixture that's outfitted with a wicker basket. As for the light, it's a deformable LED bulb. It's pretty bright and perfect for a setup like this. Enough on that though, let's add the guppies. There you have it, my take on a low-tech, no-filter guppy pond. I think it's a pretty cool and beautiful system. It should establish to become an excellent low-maintenance home and breeding ground for these fish. Plus, it was really easy to make. I think that does it for this one though. I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something new. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.